boys and girls, welcome back to the Lily Cat channel. As I mentioned in the Play Doh video, some of you have been asking for me to do toy videos playing with some of the toys that Lily Cat gets on her channel from the companies who send her toys. And I had some moms also say, Can you do some educational videos? So, yes, I am going to do an educational video today. Now there's going to be a lot of things on this video. We're going to show tying shoes, we're going to show money, we're going to show colors, shapes, time, letters, sounds, all kinds of stuff. And even some really interesting things like a brain puzzle that will tell you the, the, the uh, lobes of the brain and just put it together. And we'll talk a little bit about those and we're going to do some lacing and some spelling. It's going to be really, really cool. So are you ready to learn? Because here you're going to learn and have fun too. Our first item here is a shoe. This shoe is from Melissa and Doug. And this is a fun toy. I wouldn't advise wearing it. They're kind of hard. But it teaches you how to tie shoes. And you can look at your shoe and get used to tying it without having to do it with a shoe on. This makes it easier to get used to just the process of tying. So as you can see, the shoe is laced, and then we take these two strings and we cross them. You see how that's crossed? And then we put this end through the hole, and we pull it. That's like a half a knot. And then we take one bow, and we wrap it around, and see this hole here? We stick it through, and we pull the loops and then you have a tied shoe. Let's do that again. And I'm gonna go really slow so you can copy me with your own shoe if you'd like. So if you'd like to, I'll tie it once and you can run and get your shoe or a heavy shoe that'll sit while you pull on the laces a little. Maybe mommy or daddy's shoe or grandma and grandpa's. And then when you come back, I'll tie it again. Okay, go get a shoe, boys and girls. And we cross this over and we stick it through. My hand is in the way a little, sorry. And we pull it, we have a half a knot. And then we take one loop and we wrap it around and we push the lace through. We grab it and pull and you have a tied shoe. Let's do that one more time. All right, boys and girls back with your shoe. All right. Make sure the shoe is facing you and the strings are to the side. Cross one over and the other over. Now put your finger up and lift up. And what you can do is take one end and drop it through like that and pull gently. Then make a loop. Then wrap it around and you can drop the lace Then just push the lace through here, grab it and pull. And it doesn't have to matter if it's tied cute, you're just learning to tie your shoe right now. Now, I want to show you something. When you cross it, make sure you pull the, the lace that's under to put over. Otherwise, if you take this one and put it over, you're just going to end up with a mess. It's not going to happen. So, whichever one crosses on top, you put the lace that's under through the hole. See that? Cross. This lace is under this one. So I want to take this and put the end right in the hole and pull it. Sometimes that can be tricky. And then a loop. And then around. Push it through the bottom. Pull. And you have a tied shoe. Good job, boys and girls. That's a tough skill to master, but you'll get it. And this is a great learning toy. Check out Melissa and Doug. They have fabulous toys to learn and play with and grow with. Next, I think we'll look at some fun sorting toys. Now these, these we can do a lot with. Now we have all kinds 
This says red, and there's fruits and vegetables in there. This says yellow, and it has fruits and vegetables in there. And when we were at Chick-fil-A one day, we got a squeezy lemon. So we're going to add that because it's yellow, and it goes in the yellow bucket. This is orange, and we have orange fruits and vegetables in here. We'll look at them closer in a minute. This is green, and we have green fruits and vegetables in there. And then purple, and purple fruits and vegetables in there. Isn't that cool? And these are from Learning Resources, Inc. So parents, if you'd like to buy this, Learning Resources, Inc. is where we got these. Let's look at the red bucket. Wow! These are raspberries. These are cherries. This is a strawberry. This is an apple. And this is a tomato. Now remember, what's the same about them is that they're red. When I grew up, a tomato was considered a vegetable. Now they consider it a fruit. So these are all fruits. Not all of the buckets will have fruits in. Some will have fruits and some will have vegetables. A radish is a vegetable and that is also red, but we don't have a radish. But maybe I'll look for one and we'll do this one again another day. Okay, let's put the red fruits back in the red bucket. Let's see what we have in the yellow bucket. Ooh, we have a lot in here. <laughs> we have a yellow pepper. We have a banana. And we have another banana. I think these came from two different toy sets. This is from this, and this was from a toy set, but we threw it in. <laughs> we have a lemon. And then we have our lemon from Chick-fil-A. Filet, our squeezy lemon. It says the perfect squeeze. And then we have a yellow apple. And then we have corn. Corn is yellow. And you're saying, yes, but there's green on there. There is. This is the husk. And you peel that off and you break the bottom part off and you have a yellow piece of corn on the cob. You don't eat the husk. But the fruit or the vegetable is actually yellow. So we have a vegetable and a vegetable and then we have fruits and they're all yellow. So they go in the yellow bucket. Now we're going to look at the orange bucket. And remember, this is from Learning Resources Inc. If you want to get some, we have an orange pepper. We have an orange carrot. We have an orange apricot. Those are so good. And an orange orange. Isn't that funny? It's the only fruit that has the same name as its color. Vegetable, vegetable, fruit, fruit. They're all orange, but they're vegetables and fruits. So they can be the same, but they're different. They're also different shapes. And remember, sometimes peppers come in different colors. Remember, in our next bucket, we're also going to have a green pepper. Pretty cool. Okay, so we'll put these back in the orange bucket. And now we'll do the green bucket. We already know there's a green pepper in there. Let's see what else we have. Ooh, this is broccoli. Lily Cat's daddy loves broccoli. And this is a cucumber. This is a green apple. And this is a green lime. Vegetable, 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 fruit, fruit. Green pepper is a vegetable. Broccoli is a vegetable. Cucumber is a vegetable. This could also be a zucchini. Zucchinis look a little bit like this with the little bumps on it, so. Hmm. There's a green apple, that's a fruit, and a green lime, and that's a fruit. 
They're all green, but they're different shades of green. This is a dark green, this is a medium green, and this is a light green. See, they're all green, but they're different shades of green. Pretty cool. Those all go in the green bucket. Now we're going to do the purple bucket. Lily Cat loves purple and pink and blue. Ooh, look at that. Does anybody know what this is? Yes, this is an eggplant. Good job, eggplant. There's not really eggs in it, it's a vegetable. And if you cut it in half and put it in the oven with a little bit of water, it tastes delicious if you put butter and salt on it. We love eggplants. And this is a plum. Plum, P-L-U-M, plum. And these, do you know what these are? Blueberries. Yep. And these are grapes. Vegetable, fruit, fruit, fruit. We'll put those in the bucket. Now, we have a challenge. We're going to mix them all up. Look at this pile of fruits and vegetables. And we're going to see what they are. They are a big mixture of beautiful colors. And if they were real, they would taste awesome. Now, do you remember what the colors are and what buckets they go in? Where does the apple go? The green apple goes in the green bucket. Good job. Where does the orange carrot go? In the orange bucket. Where does the orange apricot go? In the orange bucket. That's right. Did you think I'd have two oranges in a row? Did I fool you? Where does the green pepper go? In the green bucket. Yep. Where does the squeezy lemon go? In the yellow bucket. That's right. And the other lemon goes in the yellow bucket, but this is not too squeezy. It's a little squeezy, but it's a little bit harder. Where does the orange pepper go? In the orange bucket. Good job. Where do the cherries go? In the red bucket, because cherries are red. Are these cherries? No, these are grapes. They are purple, so they go in the purple bucket. That's right. Good job, boys and girls. You're so smart. And a banana. The banana is what color? Yellow. It goes in the yellow bucket. The orange goes in the orange bucket. This would be the one that you could, it would be really hard to ever get it wrong. Okay, where do the raspberries go? In the red bucket. That's right, good job. Where does the plum go? The plum is purple. It goes in the purple bucket. Where does the eggplant go? Yes, it goes in the purple bucket too. We did two purples in a row. Did we fool ya? Where does the broccoli go? In the green bucket. Good job. Where does the pepper go? Oh, we had a green pepper. It's in the green bucket. We have an orange pepper in the orange bucket. What color is this pepper? Yes, it's yellow, and it goes in the yellow bucket. Where does this apple go? In the red bucket. Good job! And what about the cucumber, or possibly a zucchini, because they look a lot alike. It's green, you're right, it goes in the green bucket. You are so smart! Okay, what about this one? It's a tomato. It's red. It goes in the red bucket. Good job. And what about this one? Corn on the cob. Corn is yellow. So we put it in the yellow bucket. And what about the blueberries? They go in the purple bucket. 
and the strawberry is red. It goes in the red bucket. And this apple is not red. This apple is yellow. That's right, it goes in the yellow bucket. And the lime is green. The lime goes in the green bucket. Good job, boys and girls. You did awesome. Let's try a new toy. You're so smart. You can do this so easy. And remember, parents, Learning Resources, Inc. Wonderful little tool. All right. Have you ever seen a tornado? This is a pet tornado. Yes, this is really, really cool. You can make this look and act like a real tornado. And it tells you that some tornadoes have different speeds. The faster it goes, the more damage it can cause. The slower it goes, the easier it is to, to uh, keep things together in one piece. And this is made by Tedco. T-E-D-C-O-T-O-Y-S dot com. Tedco Toys. And should we make a tornado? See the little glitter in there? Here we go. We're going to start spinning it. Ooh, do you see that tornado? Is that not cool? Let's do it again. Just spin it really, really fast. Whoa! It's pretty powerful. We'll do it again. Ooh, do you see that tornado? That's pretty fun. We're going to do it one more time. Really fast. We're going to just shake it, shake it. Whoa! Tornado in a container. Tornadoes are dangerous, but that's why we stay away from them. All right. Should we try some letters? There's something or someone behind each of these letters. We have to see who it is. Okay, so under the A, who do you think's under there? A for Apple? A for Alice in Wonderland. That's pretty cool. And then under the B, we have Baloo the Bear. Do you remember him? He is a funny guy. C, Chip from Chip and Dale. D, Donald Duck. E, Eeyore. And F, Felix the Cat. G, Goofy. Goofy's a goofy guy. H, Heffalumps from Winnie the Pooh. I, Ice Cream. Everybody likes ice cream. It looks like Mickey and Minnie ice cream. J, Jiminy Cricket. He's probably one of my favorite characters. K, Kanga, again from Winnie the Pooh. L, Lady from Lady and the Tramp. She's so sweet. M, Minnie Mouse. Everybody knows Minnie Mouse. We love Minnie Mouse. She's awesome. N, a nest, and in the nest there's two eggs. What kind of animal is in an egg in a nest? A bird, that's right. O is for owl. He's also from Winnie the Pooh. He's the smart guy. P from Peter Pan. Remember Peter Pan and Wendy and the Lost Boys and Captain Hook? That's a great movie. Q. <gasps> Queen of Hearts, off with her head. We need to play croquet. R, Rabbit, also from Winnie the Pooh. S, Simba. Oh, no, actually that's not Simba. That is, I'm spacing his name right now. If you remember his name from Lion King, type it in the comments. T, Thumper, that's from Bambi. And U is for Umbrella. Do you have an umbrella? Yeah, Lily Cat does too. She likes to go dancing in the rain and stomping in puddles with her umbrella and her rubber boots. Sometimes she stomps in the puddles barefoot. 
V is for violin. Does anybody play the violin? Do you play any musical instruments? You can be musical even if you clap your hands. W, Winnie the Pooh, and almost all his friends are on here. X for x-ray. Do you ever go get an x-ray? Y is for yo-yo. And Z is for zipper. That was pretty cool. Now we're going to put them back and we're going to try to think of the sound they make. Z is for zipper. Zzz. Y is for yo-yo. Yuh, yuh. Can you say yuh, yuh? Say the sounds with me. X is for x-ray. X, X. W. W, W. V for violin. V, V. U for umbrella. Uh, uh. T for thumper. T, T. But thumper is T-H. That's th. That's combining sounds. But T is for train. T, T, train. S is for silly s. R is for rabbit. Er, rabbit. Q is for queen. K, k. P is for Peter Pan. P, p. O is for owl. Ooh, ah, oh, owl. N is for nest. N, nest. M is for mini. M. N and M sometimes sound a little bit alike. N and M. Just remember, M is M. That's like you're saying, M, that's good. L is for lady. O, lady. K is for kanga. K, k, kanga. J is for Jiminy. J, j, just Jiminy. I is for ice cream. I, I. Or I. H is for heffalump. H, h. G is for goofy. G, g. F is for Felix. F, f. And fun starts with F too. E is for Eeyore. E. A short E is E, E. For like everyone. D is for Donald Duck. D, D. And this one, C is for Chip. C-H-I-P spells chip, and C-H is ch, like choo-choo, but C is also like cup, k, k. Some of them are tricky. They have more than one sound. B is for blue, b, b, and for bear, b, b, baloo the bear. A is for Alice, and for apple, a, eh, a. Eh. Did you say the sounds with us? Very good, boys and girls. That was amazing. You are so smart. Next, we are going to look at a clock. Look at this clock. Isn't that neat? We have one, two, three, four. So we'll do those first numbers again. One, two, three, Four. Should we try going farther? Okay. Here's five, six, and six can look like nine. That's why they put the line under it so you know that it's this way. It sits on top of the line. That's actually not part of the number six. That's a six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12. Can you say them with me? We'll start at 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Very good, boys and girls. You did amazing. Now, here's a little bit harder thing to learn, but we can do it. This shorthand 
is the hour hand. The long hand is the minute hand. This is longer than this one. This ends right here and that one goes all the way up to there. And if this blue hand or the short hand is on any number, we'll put it on six. And the red hand is on 12, that means it's six o'clock. So if the minute hand is on 12, then this would be one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, straight up and down, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock when both hands are on the 12. And they're also in shapes. Here's a star, a butterfly, it's kind of a curvy rectangle sort of. This is probably not a shape that you're going to have too early on. Let me see if I can show you. We have some shape diagrams, which are really fun to use. We'll get into those in a little bit. This is one that you trace. This is for if you need to make a design on a piece of paper, then you put this on the paper and you take your pen around the corner and you trace it. Everyone knows this one. That's a triangle. I think that is a parallelogram. This is a square. And this has five sides. Does anybody know what this is called? This is six sides and that is eight sides. This is an octagon. This is a pentagon. This is a hexagon. Those are kind of hard. This is an oval. This is an octagon. And number nine is a trapezoid. 10 is a diamond. 11 is a rectangle. Should we try those again? Let's go backwards. 12 is a star. 11 is a rectangle. 10 is a diamond. Nine is a trapezoid. Eight is an octagon. You can remember this one because an octopus has eight legs and these have eight sides. Six is, six is a hexagon. Oh, we forgot seven, the oval. Five is a pentagon. Four is a square. Three is a triangle. Two is a parallelogram. Am I going too fast? One is a butterfly. Very good. That's pretty interesting stuff, all these shapes, and you can tell time. And remember, when this is on the 12, that's the hour hand, the short hand. No matter what number this is pointing at, if it's pointing exactly at the number, that number will be what time it is. Very good, boys and girls.
Next, we are going to look at some of these shapes. These are squares. They're different size squares. These are rectangles. They're different size rectangles. These are circles. They are different size circles. This is a hexagon. It has six sides. They're different size hexagons. This is a triangle. There's different size triangles. And this was just a fun one. It's got some ink and stuff on it from being used, but they have different shapes. And they teach you to measure shapes. And here's a ruler. And this is an inch. This square is one inch. From zero to one. Can you see that? That is one inch. You are measuring. And that square is two and a half centimeters. So two and a half centimeters is the same length as one inch. Good job, you just measured. That's really awesome. Okay, boys and girls, do you know what this is? This is a math kit. Yes, it is. You have numbers, and then you have symbols, and you have four colors, blue, red, green, yellow. Should we try to add and see how it works? Let's take one plus three. One plus three equals, wow, what does one plus three equal? That's a tough one. Well, let's take one blue stick and we'll take three red sticks. We have one and three, one, two, three. And then we'll bring them all together and add them up. One, two, three three, four. One plus three is four. Pretty cool, huh? Another way to do that is to say one plus three, we'll put a line under that problem, equals four. One plus three equals four. Isn't that neat? This is an, a math kit. What numbers do you want to try? Let's pick some numbers. I hear someone saying two. Let's get the number two here. Two plus four. Two plus four. How much is two plus four? It equals something. We're gonna have to get some sticks and add them up. Let's try two red ones. That's the number two and we have one, two, and then four. Let's try four green ones. Four, one, two, three, four. We have two red sticks plus four green sticks. Let's add them together over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six sticks. Should we try that again and mix them up a little so they're a little easier to see? One, two, three, four, five, six. It is six. Two plus four equals six. Isn't that awesome? You can add. Two plus four equals six. We have six sticks. 
two red ones and four green ones. Good job, boys and girls. You are awesome. Let's put these away and we'll try something a little different. <laughs> this one's gonna get harder. Can I fool you? We'll see. Let's try subtraction. This here is an addition sign. That's when you want to put one number here and one number here and put them all together and see how much you have when you put them together. This is when you have one number and you want to take some away. For instance, let's say we have two and we want to take away one. What does that equal? Well, let's get two blue sticks, one, two, and take away one red stick, okay? Actually, let's stick with the same color, just so we don't confuse it. Say we have two and we want to take one away. How many do we have left? One. Yes, because one plus one is two. See that? So if we take one away, oops, one fell, we only have one left. Two minus one minus the one means take it away is one left. Very good, boys and girls. That's pretty tough, I know. Let's try one more. Let's try four minus three. Ooh, big numbers. Okay, we're gonna do four red sticks just because the numbers are red. So we have four, one, two, three, four, minus, meaning take away three, one, two, three. We'll take those three away. So if we four and we take away three, we have one left. So four minus three equals one. Good job, boys and girls. Now, what happens if we put the addition sign in there? Four, Oh, now you have to add three more. Whoa, that's no longer one. Okay, so we have four plus three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, that's number three. So we wanna add them together. This says to put everything together. Then we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, that's a big number. Four plus three equals seven. That's awesome. You guys are learning math. Now, do you want to make it even trickier? I have a secret. When you add two things together, it's addition. When you have something and you take some away, that's subtraction. But what happens if you multiply? Multiplication, you don't know what that is? This is multiplying, that's the multiply sign. That's if you take two times multiplied by three, that means you have two and two and two. That means you have three sets of two, so two three times, so there's two once, two twice, and two three times. What does that equal? Well, let's add it up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Two times three equals six. That was pretty hard, wasn't it? Good job. You're going to learn this one day and it's going to be so easy. Let's try one more. Four times two. Okay, so we have to get four. One, two, three, four. And you need to have it twice. Two sets of four. So we'll go one, two, three, four. We have four right here and we have four right here. We have four once 
and four twice. It says have four two times, so four and four. So let's add those together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four times two equals eight. Very good, boys and girls. That was really hard. Good job. And even if you say, well, I didn't know it, I didn't do it, that's okay. You're learning, and that's wonderful. And there's one more twist. This is a division sign. So we know how to, we know how to add two things together, and we know how to take some away from a number, and we know how to make two or four or six groups of another number. But what is this? This one is interesting. We can use these same numbers. Say we have eight divided by two. What does that equal? Well, it equals four. And I'll show you what that means. Say you have eight sticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight sticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you need them divided into groups of two. There's one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. We have how many groups of two? We took eight sticks and we put them in groups of two. So we have one group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, and four groups of two. So the answer is four. Eight divided by groups of eight broken down into groups of two is four. And look at this. If we take that out, we can go two times four equals two times four groups of two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One group of two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two. That's eight. And that is called checking your work. If you have eight divided by two, you get four. So two times four is eight. And that was a little confusing, right? That's okay, you will get it. Math can be so much fun when you learn how to do it. And the way you learn is just practice. It's pretty easy. And people are usually very willing to help. So good job, boys and girls. You did addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division today. You are getting so smart. Let's try something new. Hmm, do you like puzzles? Well, this isn't just any puzzle. This is a special puzzle. This is a puzzle of the brain. Now, your brain inside your head isn't really all these colors. It's actually more of a gray color. But different pieces of the brain help you do different things. It's like the visual area helps you to see. That's your vision. Those are your eyes. And other areas like motor help you move. If you want to pick something up, your, your, this part of your brain working means that you can say, I want to pick this up. And your arm will pick it up because your brain sent your arm the message to pick it up because you wanted to. That's pretty cool. This is auditory. Oh, this is auditory. This is hearing. And let's see. What's another one? <gasps> Ooh, you know what this is? Olfactory. That's your nose. It helps you smell. Yeah. Lily Cat's daddy can't smell. This part of his brain doesn't work right. He was just born that way. He can't smell anything. So it's really important to have all the senses working together because what could happen if you couldn't smell? Well, if your house caught on fire and you didn't smell the smoke, it could burn down. 
But being able to smell because your olfactory part of your brain works means that you go, I smell smoke. I have to call for help. And then you save your house. So the brain is super important. This, your brain is the reason why you can do everything you can do. Now let's see if we can do the brain puzzle. We're going to take all the pieces out and mix them up. Whoa, look at that. That one sticks in there kind of hard. All right. Now we have all the pieces of the brain and we have this really hard brain puzzle. We, we've wiped on this before, so it's a little blue because if you write on it, then it, it lets you know what it does. Like for instance, right here, number 13, this is higher mental functions. This is like planning or creativity, things like that. Hmm. So what number should we start with? Well, how about if we start with a fun shape? Because some of the numbers I don't think we can see. Here's number four. Do you know what looks like this? Is there a piece that looks like this? This is a part of the brain that helps you speak. Right here, that's Broca's area. That's pretty cool. Let's try number two, association area. This is the part that helps you remember and helps you with your, your emotions. Look at that. We're getting the brain put together. Have you ever put together a brain before? Well, now you can say you have. Let's do number 14. This is motor functions. This is like if you want to jump or do a flip on a trampoline, this part of your brain helps you do that. Let's try, hmm, let's try number 12. That is the motor function area for eye movement and orientation. Look at that, we've got a big chunk of the brain coming together. Hmm, what's this? Do you know what this is? That's the brain stem. Let's try number 13. These are higher mental functions. We talked about that. It helps you concentrate, think, make good decisions. That's very important. Watching Lily Cat channel is a good decision. It's helping you learn. You're learning new things every day. All right, let's try voluntary muscles. Voluntary muscles are muscles you choose to move. Involuntary are muscles that move and you don't think about it, like your heart beating. That's an involuntary muscle. It sounds like a big word, but you guys are smart enough to, to learn this so easy. Number nine, sensory area. If someone touches your arm and you feel it, that's because of this area of the brain. Now let's try something else. Let's try number one. Here's the visual area. Look at that, that's pretty big. But that really helps your eyes and everything else. So you can see, you can recognize and, and know what you're looking at. Sometimes when things are new to us, we have to look at them a few times before we remember what they are. But your brain still remembers even if you don't. That's how cool a brain is. And this is a tough one. This is somatosensory association area. What this is is a tiny little part of your brain right here. And what it does is it lets you check out weight or texture or temperature which helps you know what things it are. If you see a little square and you don't know what it is, but you touch it and it's wet and cold, you go, oh, that's probably an ice cube. And that's what this part of your brain does. It helps you think through difficult things and figure it out. Kind of like a detective area part of your brain. Okay, and now this one, we can get that in there. That's sensory. That's just things you sense when you see, hear, smell, taste, or touch. It's a sense. 
and auditory for hearing. So there's your brain. Your brain helps you do everything in the whole world that you do. Eating, sleeping, playing, doing homework, understanding what someone's saying, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching. This is what the brain does. That is probably the most important organ in your whole body. If one of these areas gets damaged, then you can't do some things that you used to be able to do. Some kids are in a wheelchair because their legs don't work. That's because part of their brain can't tell their legs or their arms or something to move. And it's also very important, boys and girls, when you see someone who can't do the things you do, go talk to them and be their friend. Because sometimes it's harder for kids to have friends when they can't do the things other kids do and they feel really sad. And we don't want people to be sad. We want to be really nice and make everyone feel happy and loved and special. So it doesn't matter what someone looks like. It doesn't matter what they're wearing, if they have a cast on or a splint or a special helmet on their head or glasses. They are still a person and they are still worth being a friend with and they will love that. There you go. That's the brain. Let's see what else we have. We have a lot of fun stuff. <gasps> you guys know what a frog is, right? Did you know that frogs start from eggs? They do. This is the life cycle of a frog. What that means is from the moment it's born till the moment it dies. It's a cycle. And this is their life. A mommy frog lays eggs in the water. And after a while, the eggs hatch and baby frogs come out. And that's what they look like when they're eggs. Isn't that cool? And this is a little tadpole. It doesn't have legs yet, so it can't hop. But it has a tail so it can swim. Did you know that? Frogs had tails and they swam in the water like fish? Yes, they did. That's the second stage of a frog life cycle. And this is a froglet. It still has a tail, but now it has legs. Do you see the legs, boys and girls? That's a froglet, a froglet. And then when it's all grown up, it's a frog. That's the frog we're used to seeing. The tail is gone, its legs are strong, and the frog is all grown up. How long does it take for a frog to go from an egg to a grown frog? Well, the eggs hatch in about six to 10 days. That's how long it takes to go from an egg to a tadpole. So that's not quite two weeks. It's less than a half a month. And then a tadpole grows its legs in six to eight weeks. That's about one and a half to two months. So that's not very long. And then how long does it go, take to go from a tadpole to a froglet when it has its legs? It takes four weeks. That's one month. That's 28 days. You can have 28 or 30 or 31 days in a month. 28 day, four weeks is 28 days. There's seven days in a week. Seven times four is 28. And that's a froglet stage. And then the grown frog will live for eight to 10 years. Can you imagine living 10 years as a frog? I don't know what I'd do. I'd have to eat bugs and live on, and float on a lily pad and live by the lake. Well, I'd like to live by a lake. It'd be fun to float on a lily pad, but I would not want to eat a bug. Ew. So that's the life cycle of a frog. Good job, boys and girls. You are learning so much. I'm going to put this away and get something new. I have a great idea. <laughs> Remember when we sorted all these? Remember when we did those colors in the bucket? That was pretty fun. Well, there's another item that's made by the same company, Learning Resources. 
that does almost the same thing, but it's a smaller fruit and it's a pie shape. You want to see the pie? Oh, look at this pie. Isn't it beautiful? Guess what's in it? Fruits! Oh, isn't that fun? You can put this right in there, put the cover on the pie, and no one would know. What a cool toy. You can play with it, but it's also for learning. That's really cool how they made that. <laughs> Should we try it? Okay. Well, looks like we have a mess in here. Let's empty this out and see what we have. Ooh, they're falling all over. All right, boys and girls, I have all the fruits in here. Do you see those? This is a banana, and this could be a green banana or a plantain. Here's grapes, and a plum, and a strawberry. Isn't that cute? And an orange, and an apricot. What else do we have? A lemon, and cherries or raspberries. I think these are probably cherries. Isn't that fun? And I think we have a green apple. We're going to sort those into this pie. Should we do that? You can sort them by the type of fruit or you can sort them by color. Let's try sorting them by color first. Wow. Okay. We have to find the yellow ones. Here's a banana, and a banana, another banana. We have lots of bananas in there. Oh, but we still have the lemons. Are we going to have enough room? <gasps> we'll have to see. I hope they don't spill out. It's going to be pretty full. Look at that, all the yellows in the yellow section. Good job. Should we do the purple? Here's purple. There's some grapes. Let me get all the grapes out first. Wow, look at all them grapes. And now some plums. It's getting pretty full. Wow. Look at that. It's really full. Whew, but we just made it. But we still have a lot of fruit to put in our pie. Okay, let's do the green. These are either green bananas or plantains. Plantains are kind of like bananas. Down here in Florida, they cook them and eat them. They like them hot. And now we're going to put some limes in. Or are they green apples? I think they're green apples. Yes, they are. They're not in the shape of a lime, silly me. One more. Whoa, that's a pretty full pie. We still have some more to do. Oranges. Here's some oranges. Two, three, four, five, Six. We have six oranges. They fit in there very nice. Now we have to do some apricots. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a pretty full pie. We have one section left. We have raspberries. One, two, Three, four, five. And then we have apples. One, two, three, four, five, six. We did it. Good job, boys and girls. We split everything into colors. Now we could put that on and have a color pie. Look at how fun that is. Do you want to try dividing it 
by fruit. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna put this in like this and just flip it over. And there they are. Then we're gonna open this and flip this over. Oh, ooh, look at that. Now we have to divide it by fruit. Do you think we can do it? I think we can, you're right. Okay, that means anything that looks like this goes in here. Doesn't matter if it's purple or if it's red because now we're sorting by shape, not by color. So let's put these in there and see how it goes. Can we fit them all in? They look kind of big, I don't know. This is gonna be pretty tricky. I think we can do it. Oh my goodness, it's getting pretty big. Can we do it, boys and girls? Oh, we still have more. What are we gonna do? It's a berry burst overload. Wow, we did it, good job. Now we have to put everything that looks like a banana in here, or a plantain. Okay, can we fit them all in? We're gonna try. It's pretty full. Yikes! I hope we make it. There's a lot. Ew! They're falling all over in there. I'm trying to grab them. They're pretty sneaky. Whoa! We made it. That's a pretty colorful pie. So now, we have to put the apples in. We have green apples and red apples. Here we go, we're doing green and red. We're getting them all in there. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Looks like a Christmas pie there with red and green. We still have more to go. Oh my goodness. Okay, we have to put everything in that looks like a lemon or an orange. Let's get those in there. There sure are a lot. I hope that we can get it all in the pie. Are we making a pie for someone? Oh, if you could eat a pie, what kind would you have? Apple pie? That's good. I'd have blueberry. Now we have to put everything in that looks like a plum or an apricot. And you can see that little line right there. They both have one. Plums and apricots look a lot alike. <laughs> this almost looks like a Halloween pie with the orange and purple. Do you like Halloween? I love trick-or-treating. Holidays are meant to just be purely fun and fun they are. And we hang out with our friends and we do fun things. Look at this beautiful pie. We have a fruit pie sorted by shape. First we did it by color, then we did it by shape. That's awesome. So now we're going to do it one more time, but we have this. Do you know what that is? These are numbers. We're going to try something new that we've never done before. I haven't even done it. So I'm doing it with you for the first time. We're gonna try putting one through five in here. One of these will have one, and the next one will have two, but we won't put any more in than that, okay? What should we choose for one? How about for one, we have a plantain. That is one plantain right in there. And two, let's try grapes and raspberries. We have two things in there, one and two. For three, I know. Let's try some apples, a, red, a green apple and a red apple. It's rolling on top of the three. And another red apple. We have three things in there. Now four, let's try 
two bananas and two plantains. Two plus two is four. We have two bananas and we have two plantains. One, two, three, four, and that's the number four. Now for five, hmm, you're right. I think we should do oranges and, oranges and lemons. I agree, because we haven't done any of those yet. One, two, whoops, not in there. Three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. We did it. We did one through five, but now, it's going to get harder. We have to do 6 through 10. Are you ready for this? This is the ultimate pie counting challenge. Here we go. Let's do this. Hmm. Let's do 1. I think I'm going to use my fingers there. 2 3 four, five, and six. We have six in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's the number six. Now we have to do seven. <gasps> That's gonna be tricky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yay, we have seven of them. That looks so cute. <coughs> so now we have to do eight. Oh, I think we better do orange, oranges and lemons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight! We got eight in there. That was a tight fit, but we can still see the number. We don't have to. It's just fun to see the number. Now, whoops, I guess we have to do plums and apricots. We haven't done them yet. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. We did it. We got nine, and we can still kind of see the number in there. Here's the tough one. We've got to do ten. All right. I think we're going to have to mix some fruit because we don't have ten of the same color, and I don't think we have ten between the two colors. So let's do apples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We did it. We did ten. You guys are awesome. You're counting and you're grouping by colors, by shapes, by number. You are so smart. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yay! Now let's see what else we have. First, we're going to put these in here because we like to put stuff away properly so that we know where everything is the next time we need it. Cleaning up is super important. There we go, and there's our beautiful pie. And this, moms and dads, is also by Learning Resources. They have an exceptional array of learning toys, and they really are fun, and they're very versatile. So let's see what else we have. Do <laughs> you know what this is? This is my money bag. 
It's not real money, but it's how Lily Cat learns money. Because she's homeschooled, and I'm her mommy, but I'm also her teacher, so we have all these things for her to learn. Should we see what this is? We have a $1. It's kind of bent up a little bit because she uses it a lot. $5, $10, and $20. Did you know there's also a $2 bill? There is. You can get one at the bank. They're just not that common, but if you ask for them, you can get one. And this is a penny. Can you see that? That's a penny. Put it right here. Move this up just a little bit so you can see it. And this, this is a nickel. And this tiny little thing is a dime. And this big one is a quarter. Wow. So, this is the interesting part. This penny is worth one cent. This nickel is worth five cents, which is the same as five pennies. And this tiny little dime is actually worth more than this big nickel. It's worth 10 pennies. It's 10 cents. And this one is the biggest coin. That's 25 cents. That's 10, 25. That's like 25 pennies. That's a lot. We use quarters in gumball machines and toy machines. If we try putting a nickel in, it's kind of big, but it won't work. It'll just get the machine stuck and you won't get anything out and you can't get your nickel back. Lily Cat learned that the hard way. 25 cent piece. A dime is, this is a quarter, it's 25 cent. This is a dime, it's worth 10 cents. This is a nickel, it's worth 5 cents. And this is a penny, it's worth 1 cent. And I don't know why they're different colors. Now this is a dollar. This is worth four of these make one dollar. Ten of these make a dollar. Twenty of these nickels make a dollar. But you have to have a hundred pennies to make a dollar. So this is worth a lot of money. Not this play money, but if it was real money it would be. And this is five dollars. That's five times the amount of that. And this is $10. Ooh, you could get a Happy Meal and a small toy for that. And this, this is $20. That's a lot of money. You could get two Happy Meals and one medium-sized toy for this. And this is just a money drawer that I found from somewhere, so I put it all in there. I think it came out of a toy cash register. Oops, but we don't have a cash register, not yet. So we just put it in this drawer. I think we found it at a garage sale. I find a lot of cool learning things at garage sales. All right, now let's put that away. I keep them in a bag so in case they spill, they're inside the bag. Okay. You guys are doing great. You're such awesome students. Since we're doing numbers and counting, here are some blocks and they have numbers on and they also have dots. Number one, you get one dot. The number two, you get two dots. Number three, you get three dots. One, two, three. Number four has four dots. It's almost like dice. Number five has five dots. The number six has six dots. Number seven has seven dots. The number eight has eight dots. They're all there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number nine has a lot of dots, nine of them. Whoa. And number 10, whoa, they're all there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten dots. 
But the cool thing about these is while you're learning to count, you can also string them. Have you ever done stringing? Stringing is very fun. We can take one of these. These are already tied on. It just makes it easier so the blocks don't fall off the edge. And we can thread it through just like that and make a big necklace. It's pretty fun. You can thread buttons and you can thread beads. You can thread noodles. You can thread rings. You can thread all kinds of fun stuff. Sometimes you can take plastic lids and you can put a hole in them, get a shoelace, paint the lids, and then when they dry, you can paint happy faces or, smi or smiles or goofy faces and you can string those. So this is stringing. Isn't that fun? And they even have sewing cards where they have a shape of an animal and you sew all the way around the animal. It's so neat. And this one has stars and circles and squares and pillars. We call them pillars. So you can string all kinds of fun stuff with them. So if you want a fun stringing activity, this is a great one to get. We have a lot of fun with it. And then when you're done, you just wind it up, put it in here, and it has its own little cart to put stuff away. Simple as that. Isn't that handy? And so fun. And very, very colorful. Let's try something else. We have so many things we can do. Look at this. This is a really fun one. There's words on here. This says C-O-W, says cow. And I think someone put a lot of the letters in here. I'm betting, betting it was Lily Cat. She learned to read this year. She read her first book and she was so proud of herself. And so we are working on spelling and sounding out letters because that's how you learn to read. You have to know what the letters say. The D says D, D. The O says O. The G says G. So you can go dog. O says O and A. So they can make two sounds, a long sound and the short vowel sound. Dog, D. Og, dog. Isn't that cool? So it's good to know how to sound them out because then you can read anything you want. It might take you a little while to sound all the letters out, but it'll be awesome. All right, and on the back, we have other words. Duck, D-U-C-K. Sock, S-O-C-K. Duck, sock. Here's cat, C-A-T, at, cat. Here's car, K R car. Frog, we just did the life cycle of the frog, didn't we? And here's fish in the Play-Doh video that I just made a while ago. Um, you'll see me making Play-Doh fish. Hen and pig. What do you say we find the letters and make hen and pig? Okay, we need to find, this is an I, is there an I somewhere? <gasps> right here, that's the middle letter to pig. And here's a G, that's the third letter to pig. Now we have to find, oh, here's an E, is that right? Nope, it fits, but it doesn't fit correctly. E, right there, that's the E, good job. Now we have to find, here's the P, pig, P-I-G, P-I-G, pig. Good job, boys and girls. Now we need to find, here's an N, what letter is that? That's right, it's an H. We need to find an H so we can spell hen. There's a lot of letters in here. This one's being pretty tricky. I know it's in there. We'll find you, H. Are you hiding from us? 
That's silly H. Here it is. We gotcha. H E N. Ha. Eh. N. Hen. Ha. N. Hen. P. I. G. Pig. Hen and pig. Good job, boys and girls. You did amazing. That was wonderful. Let's try something a little more difficult because you guys are smarter than I anticipated. When you anticipate, it's when you think this is probably what it's going to be like and you're either right or someone surprises you and it's even better than what you thought. All right. Here's some more colors and here's some more shapes. And again, I put it in a plastic bag so if it tips, it doesn't spill all over the floor. And look at that. Well, what is this you're asking? Well, let me show you. Do you see a train? Yep. And a fish? Yep. Here's a boat. And a snail. Oh, what a cute little snail. Here's a bird. There's the beak and the feathers and the wings and its feet. And here's a pretty sun or maybe it's a flower. Here's a butterfly. <laughs> and here's a flower. And back here we have a puppy and we have a bunny. Should we make a bunny? Let's make a bunny. Do you know how? Do you see all these shapes right here? You have to find the shape, and it has to be the right color, as these. And then you put them in its spot. For instance, here is an orange square, and I put it in the orange square. And then I keep putting the shapes in, just like that, until we make the animal. This is such a fun activity. And you can even make shapes on your own. You can make up pictures. Have you done that before? Making up pictures is so much fun. Let me see. We're going to put this right here. Oh, we need little bunny feet. Right there. Isn't that so cute? I love bunnies. Do you like bunnies? Lily Cat wants to get a bunny, and we think we're going to do that. We'll probably get a bunny around Christmas. That's a pretty fun present. Don't tell her. She doesn't know. She also wants a kitty and a puppy. So we're still deciding. And there's our bunny. Isn't that really neat? Look, you can make a bunny out of shapes. Now should we try to make something on our own? Okay. All right, boys and girls, I need ideas. What should I try and make? That's a good one. Anybody else have ideas? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. All right, I've heard your ideas, some good ones, and I think I'm gonna go with the house. That looks like a good one. So, what do we need to build a house? Hmm, well, I think we need some orange blocks, just like that. Let's get some orange blocks. Does that look like a square? Okay, that's what we need for that. Now, we need a roof, just like this. Hmm. We need another triangle. Does that look like a house? It does. See, you can use your mind to build stuff. Hmm, what else should we make? I know, how about a flower? That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Let's see if we can do it with these. I have an idea. I don't know if it's gonna work. I've never done it before, but we're gonna try. It involves a lot of pieces. Are you ready? 
This is gonna be so cool. We need lots of white. Lots of white. And then I think we need some green ones. Can we get some green ones over here? There we go. We need two more green ones, one more. All right, we're going to try to make a flower. Can you guess how I'm gonna do it? Okay, first I'm gonna put this on here. Looks almost like a face with a hat. Then I'm gonna put one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Right now, kinda looks like a flower or maybe a silly sun. So I'm gonna go like this now and make a stem and then I'm gonna put a little flower petal on it. How does that look? Does that look like a flower? It sure does. So you can make all kinds of stuff or we could get really creative and do this and make a really cool flower. Look at that, that's so awesome. Whoa, we could even put two in there like this. Look at that, that's so cool. You can be as creative as you want and you can't ever do it wrong because it's just your own imagination. And that's what makes these fun to do. Look at that. Look at this cool flower. Oh, I just love it. Wow. And we could even make it bigger. Ooh, look at that. That is so fun. You can just take these blocks and keep adding onto the picture over and over until you come up with something you didn't even know you were going to create. Everything starts with an idea. And sometimes the best ideas come out of things that people think are mistakes. <laughs> One man, he was a, a doctor, a scientist, and he was in his lab. A lab is a place where you do experiments. And he was trying to make something to help people get better when they're sick. And he stuck something in the fridge and forgot about it and came back the next day. And he had something that got on him or someone else and it made him better and that's how he founded penicillin. Penicillin is a medication that we take when we're sick. So sometimes accidents can be the best things ever. They can even save lives. So that is our shapes puzzle boys and girls. I hope you like that and I hope that you get one. This one also came from Melissa and Doug. Melissa and Doug and Learning Resources are a couple of my favorite ones. I also really like Miniland Educational. They are fabulous. And they have a lot of fun stuff and you can learn while you play. Lily Cat made a Miniland Educational video with two of their toys. So if you look for it, you can check it out and see what they have. Oops, I have to turn it this way. There we go. Now we'll put this back in its container. And it's always a good idea to put everything in a bag just because then if something spills, at least it's in the bag and you don't have to worry about a mess all over. There we go. All right. That was kind of like a puzzle. So what do you say we do another puzzle? You guys did so great with the brain. Now this is amazing. This is a map of the whole United States of America. If Lily Cat lives in Florida, and yes, we have alligators down here. She calls them crocagators. At least she used to when she was really little. Look at that, an alligator. And this is Florida, and she lives right about there, right on the alligator's leg. Isn't that funny? She's not really on a real alligator's leg, but in the picture where the alligator's leg in, that is approximately the place that the city she lives in is. So what do you say we take these out and then we try to put it together? This is really hard, but I know some of you are great at, at uh, pictures and at puzzles, so 
We're gonna take these all out and see if we can put it all together. Are you ready? We're gonna mix them up because we don't wanna make it easy. We're gonna make this really tricky because we know we're smart enough to beat all the tricks, right? We can do it. In Lily Cat State, the state of Florida, we have Disney World, and we have Sea World, and we have wax museums, and we have beaches. We have all kinds of fun stuff. We have Legoland, and we have some cool kids museums. So if you ever want to go on a vacation, come check it out. And if you're going to be down here, drop Lily Cat a message on one of her videos, and she'll get it or email her. And maybe, just maybe, you can meet Lily Cat. Wouldn't that be fun? Lily Cat loves making new friends. So here's the map without any puzzle pieces. Whew, that's a lot of states. Each one of these is a state, and each dot is the capital city of the state. And there are 50 states in the United States of America. All right, let's see if we can do this. Let's first try to find this one. That is Alaska. Does this look like Alaska? Yes. And the capital is Juneau. Look at that. That wasn't too hard. Hmm. This one could be a little tricky. Honolulu is the capital, and it's in the state of Hawaii. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Hawaii is beautiful. They have some volcanoes erupting right now. And when volcanoes erupt, hot lava comes out. And then when it cools, it forms new land. So it's like, it like, it's like an island that makes itself into a new island every now and then. Really interesting. This is California. Sacramento is the city, the capital. I used to live in California for a while. And this one is Texas. That is an armadillo. It's an animal with a really hard shell. Now let's find Phoenix is the capital of Arizona. Do you see the cactus there? There's a lot of cacti out there, a lot of them. Now Santa Fe is the capital for New Mexico. And here is New Mexico, and they have cactus too, but theirs have pretty flowers sometimes. It's super fun to learn about each state. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. Hmm. Carson City is the capital of Nevada, and they have rattlesnakes out there. You gotta be careful where you step, because sometimes they blend into the dirt, and you can't even tell they're there. All right, so let's try Salt Lake City. That is the capital in Utah. And look at that. They have wild animals there. Yes, they do. And Denver is the capital of Colorado. Colorado is a wonderful, wonderful, smart state. They have a lot of really neat things there. Um, Oklahoma City is in Oklahoma. That one's kind of easy to remember because the capital is Oklahoma City. So it's easy to remember that the state's name is Oklahoma because the city is named after the capital. The capital is named after the, the state. That's pretty cool. Baton Rouge is in Louisiana. Do we see Louisiana down here? It's somewhere. It's a lot of states. Here it is. It looks like a little boot. Look at that. And they have a lot of fish they eat down there. Now, that's right next to Jackson. And Jackson is, do you know what, cat, what state the capital is? Jackson, Mississippi. It's the goofy little fun little shape. Yes, it is. 
And well, we already talked about this. Tallahassee is the capital of Florida. That's where Lily Cat lives. We love Florida. And above it is Atlanta, and that's the capital of the state, Georgia. Now, where is Georgia? It starts with a G. There it is. Lots of peanuts. Lots of peanuts come from there. Let's see. Now, we have to find Montgomery is the capital of the state called Alabama. There's a lot of cotton there. Cotton grows well there because it's really hot. These cities right here can be extreme. These states can be really hot all the way around here because we're down south. Up north, you get snowy states. We don't get snow. And so that kind of cools it off a little bit throughout the year. Okay, now, Columbia is the capital of South Carolina. And there's a lot of fruit grown down there. Little Rock is the capital of Arkansas. And they have like geckos and things like that. They're really cool. Wild animals, you shouldn't go near them, but they're really fun to learn about. Topeka is the capital of the state called Kansas. Did you know that? Kansas is kind of in the middle of the whole United States of America. Kind of like the central point. Nashville is the capital of Tennessee. Most people, when they think about Tennessee, they think about Elvis Presley and Dolly Parton, and a lot of them because they have Graceland and Dollywood. Lots of country western singers have some great music and some great places to go visit there. Let me see. <laughs> How about we finish up this side here and Salem is the capital of the state called Oregon. Now where is that? We gotta find it in these pieces. There's so many pieces yet. Hmm, do you see Oregon? It starts with a O. It has a bird on it. That's right, it's right here. Isn't that cool? And Olympia is the capital of the state called Washington. They are in the upper corner of the United States of America. And Boise, that's a funny name, but it's a cool city. It's the capital for the state called Idaho. Yes, it is. Awesome place to visit. And Helena is the capital of a state called Montana. One of my friends, Helen, used to live there. And she moved to Minnesota, and she and I became friends before I had Lily Cat. Montana. Cheyenne is the capital of Wyoming. And right now we've almost completed the whole west side of the United States. This is the central United States right here, and this is the east coast. There's a lot of ways to define an area. Now, let's see if we can start filling this in. Lincoln is the capital of a state called Nebraska. And then we have Pierre is the capital of South Dakota. Bismarck is the capital of North Dakota. I have a great friend, Gail, who lives up there. Lots of friends all over the United States. And Raleigh over here is the capital of North Carolina. These states kind of fit together just like a little puzzle. Sometimes they cut pieces funny just for fun, but these are actually the shapes of the states. Okay, now we're starting to get closer to the end of this puzzle. Jefferson City is the capital of Missouri. Des Moines is the capital of Iowa, and it's not Des Moines. The S is silent. It's there, but you don't say it. It's Des Moines, Iowa. And St. Paul is the capital of Minnesota. And that's a very cold state in the winter. Very, very cold. So now we are working on the last part of central United States, and then we'll finish with the east coast. So. Down here, we have Frankfurt, and that is the capital of Kentucky. 
and Springfield is the capital of Illinois. And Indianapolis is the capital of Indiana. Isn't that cool how this all fits together? Puzzles are so much fun. And now Madison is the capital of Wisconsin. I had a friend, Jeremiah, who went to school there. I have a friend, Elizabeth, who lives in Minnesota, too. And Michigan is the state where the, the capital Lansing is. We just finished the west and the middle of the United States. We're getting down there. We only have a few left. And then we'll have the rest of the state done. Richmond is the capital of Virginia. Pretty cool, huh? Columbus is the capital of Ohio. And Charleston is the capital of West Virginia. There's a lot of states in there. We're going to get to there. Harrisburg is the capital of Pennsylvania. And Albany is the capital of New York. Lily Cat's Uncle Willie lives in New York. He is awesome. Augusta is the capital of Maine. And then these two, there's so many states you can't really see them. So I'll just read them to you. We have Mount Pelier, Vermont, Concord, New Hampshire, Boston, Massachusetts, Providence, Rhode Island, Hartford, Connecticut, Trenton, New Jersey, Dover, Delaware, and Maryland is some. Oh, we are missing one piece. Hold on. There it is. <laughs> there we go. I thought we lost it. And this is all 50 states of the United States of America. If you go outside your door and you look around, you stand in one spot and you look around as far as you can see, that is like one tiny speck of this whole United States. That's how big the United States in is. And the United States is like one speck on the whole globe, the whole world. So this earth is a big, big place. And you, brilliant people, just covered 50 states of the United States of America. Good job. Now, how about if we do something really cool Look at that. What is this? This is a ba bucket balance toy. Yeah. You can measure solids or liquids, explore volume, which is like how much is in something, and make comparisons. Let's look at it. And that also came from learning resources. How exciting. We're gonna slide this out. We have a bucket in here yet that we need. So this is our scale. And Lily Cat has some stuff in here. And these go on the outside right here. So she likes to put stuff in there to see how heavy they are. We measure everything. But I brought I brought some bears, and these come from a place called Lakeshore Learning. Lakeshore Learning is a wonderful place. You can look it up online, and they have the most exciting and interesting and fun learning tools. All right. Get that right there so you can see it just perfectly. We'll open up this bag of bears. And I'm going to show you what this does. Okay, these are the same weight right here. So if we put a yellow bear in here and a yellow bear in here, as you can tell, they're all the same size and all the same weight. So two yellow bears. How many bears on that side do we need to even the scale? Do we need one yellow bear? Nope. Do we need two yellow bears? Yep, because two yellow bears and two yellow bears weigh the same. Do you think a colored bear weighs more than a, than a different colored bear? 
Let's try it. Let's put a yellow bear in here and a blue bear in here. Nope, colors don't make a difference in what something weighs. It's the weight of something. So we can put two bears in here, two bears in here, and they're gonna weigh the same because they're both the same weight. They're just different colors. Sometimes Lily Cat likes to put water in here or something else. Looks like this is off just a hair. And we weigh things like we'll weigh water and we'll weigh like glitter slime or unicorn slime or something like that or blocks or maybe we'll weigh like a cup of soda or milk or water and sometimes we'll put food coloring in it and we'll just see what weighs the most. And sometimes she'll go outside and get rocks or mushrooms or bark or leaves off trees and we'll use them in science. But we weigh things and we trace them and we color over them. It's just a really, really fun toy. So if you guys are looking for something different to do with measuring, this is a great idea. It seems as though we have a bead back there that is not letting us shut the... There we go. There's a bead back there and we got it loose. There we go. So this is a bucket balancer toy. And this is really, really fun. I just wanted you to see it so you could learn about measuring from learning resources. All right, boys and girls. So now we're going to talk about, remember when we did the letters and like A for Alice in the, in the alphabet puzzle? Well, now we're going to talk about vowels. There are some letters in the alphabet that are called vowels. A, E, I, O, U. A long A is, makes the sound like plain. A long A, plain. Face, rain, cave, page, and pale. And then there's a short A. That's like an A, but it's A, A. This is A and that's A. A for apple, A for lamp, cat, trap, mask, hat. So two letters that are the same, one letter, A, can have two different sounds. A and A, plain face, apple, lamp. So that's A. The silly monsters on there, they make it learning so much fun. And then we have a long E. That's E for cheese, for C, for feel, for team, leaf, tree, and a short E. And again, we have two silly monsters. Is E, like nest, pen, bed, sled, net, and tent. Long E, short E. E for cheese, E for nest, but they're both an E. Two different sounds. So we did A and we did E. Now we're going to do I. A long I is I, like ice, hide, kite, life, dive, nice. I and a short I is I for pig, kid, drip, slim, fish, and spin. P ig, ki, id, and long I is a ice, hide. So there's the long I and the short I. The letters are the same, I and I, but they sound different. And you have to know that so you know how to sound out the word the correct way. But it's easy because there's only five of them. So now we have the long O. O for snow, something we don't get here in Florida. Home, goat, rose, globe, mo. That's a O sound. The letter O is the long O. Now this is the short O. A, pa, on, hop. Frog. There's another frog. Remember the life cycle of the frog we did? Yep. Lost. Fox. Stop. So they're, they're both O's, but that's a long O sound and a short O sound. 
And now we have one more left. Here's a long U. U for like blue, fruit, ruler, tube, cute, tune. Ooh, a long U is ooh. Now a short U is uh, uh, for fun, fa un, sun, sa un, drum, mud, duck, and nut. These look like a couple of silly nuts, those monsters. They do make learning fun though. So the same letter, but different sounds. Long U, ooh, short U, uh. So the five vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. And remember, they both have long and short sounds. So I hope that helps you kind of think about the difference in the letter sounds. Just because there's one letter doesn't mean it only makes one sound. And the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. And sometimes Y. But right now, just focus on A, E, I, O, U. Those are the vowels. And when you learn to write words, then you can start writing sentences. But when you write a sentence, sometimes you have to end it with certain little marks. Those little marks are called punctuation. And in kindergarten, you have to start writing sentences and punctuating them correctly. You don't have to know every punctuation mark, but you have to know a couple. For instance, if you ask a question like, what is your name? Then you put this at the end of it, because that means you're saying something and you want, you're asking a question when you say it, and you want an answer. So you put a question mark at the end. Sometimes I have a Facebook account. I'll have people who say something like, the weather is terrible, and they'll put a question on it. And I don't know if they understand that you shouldn't put a question mark. You should put an exclamation point because you're saying, the weather is terrible. And that should be an exclamation point because you're showing emotion or strong feeling. I really mean what I say. It's not just like, oh, the weather is nice. That's a nice statement. You'd end that with a period. It just says you're saying something, and it's the end of the thing you're saying. But this means, the weather is terrible. I really want you to hear that I'm just frustrated or upset or sad over this. So use an exclamation point when you write that kind of a sentence. But a question mark is only when you want someone to respond to you with an answer. So like I was saying, sometimes on Facebook, people will say, the weather is just terrible. And I don't know if they understand they're not punctuating correctly or if they're trying to communicate something and they don't understand they're not being clear because they're not using the correct words or the correct punctuation. So when we write something, it's very important that we use the right mark. So if I say, what is your name? That's a question because I want you to tell me what your name is. You're supposed to give me an answer. So then I would use this. If I say, your name is silly, then I put an exclamation because I think your name was silly and I want you to show that I really like your name and it's fun. But if I say, my name is Lily Cat's mommy, then I just put a period at the end of the sentence because that just shows I'm done with what I'm saying. So those are little marks that are called punctuation marks. Now, I'm going to show you another one. Pretend I'm telling you two things in one sentence, like, hmm, there is one monster and the other monster is, no, actually, here's a better example. I have a ball and a bat and a glove. Instead of saying, I have ball, bat, glove, when you write it, you'd say, I have a ball, comma, a bat, comma, and a glove. This separates three things that, so that you know they're different things, but they're all grouped into the same thing you're saying. That's a comma. 
It can be used to separate words or in dates or addresses. This is quotation marks. You put these at the beginning of something you write and the end of something you write. If it's something someone else said and you want to put down exactly what their words are, if you say, she said she won, I won, then you'd say, I won and put those around it because that's what the other person said. Those were their exact words. So that's kind of fun. These are difficult things to learn if they're new to you, but once you use them, they're super easy. But these are the three most important. If you're asking someone a question and you need an answer, you end it with a question mark when you're writing. If you're writing something and you want to tell them this is really horrible weather because it makes you feel very strongly, then you put an exclamation point. But if you say, oh, it's a beautiful day, and people know it's a beautiful day, and it's true, and that's a good thing to say, and it's nice. You end that quest, that, that sentence with a period. It's just a mark. It says, this is the end of my sentence. It's just like an exclamation, only minus the top part. Because you're saying something, but this is really important to you, and this is just a fact. So there's a little punctuation for you writers out there who are learning to write or who are going to start writing. It lets you know there's different ways to say something. And it's very important when you say something for people to hear you or understand you. So it's nice to have this stuff in your mind so you know how to make sure your information that you're telling them is taken the right way. And this is another thing I wanted to show you. This is really important. These are the months of the year. It's January. This is how you abbreviate it. If you don't want to write the whole word, you just write Jan with a dot. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. There's 12 months in a year. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 months in a year. That's a long time, isn't it? Most of the months have about 30 to 31 days. And the interesting thing is February only has 28. That's a shorter month. With the months of the year, November, December, and January are winter months. February, March, and April are spring. May, June, and July are summer. August, September, and October are fall or autumn. Some people call it autumn. And in these months, Sometimes it rains, sometimes it's really hot, sometimes there's snow, sometimes there's a lot of wind, or sometimes it's muddy. There's a lot of different weather patterns that we can have at different times of the year. And it's good for the earth because it keeps the earth warm and then watered and then protected so that we keep growing trees and plants and, and other good things. So we have to remember that each season is necessary to help keep the earth looking green and healthy and fun. And there was one thing I really was excited to show you guys today. Have you heard of sign language? There are people, remember when we were talking earlier in the video about some kids who are in wheelchairs or some kids who wear glasses because some parts of their brain or their body don't work right? Well, there are some people who use sign language because their ears don't work. Remember I said Lily Cat's daddy can't smell? Well, some people can't hear. So they talk with their hands. And this is their alphabet. Let's try it together. This is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X. That's a hard one. Y and then Z. That's the alphabet in sign language. I can spell names and everything with that. 
Lily Cat is L I L L Y K A T. That's Lily Cat. Mommy is M O M M Y. If you'd like your name spelled in sign language, put your first name only in the comments and I'll do a special sign language video on this. Lily Cat's older sister is deaf and she has to learn sign language to talk to her older sister. That's pretty cool, huh? So that's going to be her second language in school because in school you have to learn a second language. Here's a smaller version. Can everybody see that clearly? There you go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And here's some good signs to learn. If you need help, you go like this. That's help. If you're hungry, you go like this, down the front of your shirt, from like your throat to your belly. If you want to play, you just do this. If you want to eat, you do this towards your mouth. If you want someone to stop, you say stop. If you have to go to the bathroom, you sh make the letter T and you shake it back and forth. If you love someone, you go like this, on your heart. If you want to drink, you pretend you're holding a glass and you tip it up to your lips. And if you want a friend, you do this. That means friend. Everybody make that. That's like the letter X in both hands. And you bring your fingers together in like little hooks. That means friend. That is so cool, isn't it? You can find out all kinds of words you can say and spell with sign language letters with your hands. Find a friend and practice and develop a fun language together. And the nice thing is, is Lily Cat's older sister Beth, she and I can talk to each other through windows. We can talk across a house or a parking lot. As long as we can see each other's hands, we don't have to hear what we're saying because we just know. It's pretty awesome. I'm so glad you guys are listening to all this fun stuff. And now we have this. This is a really fun toy. Most of you recognize the top because you've seen shape sorting toys and you can do that with this. But there's also buckets and this gets so big, I'm not kidding you. First, we're gonna play with the bucket. And this was from Miniland Educational. And it's super cool because you have the traditional shape sorter toy with a stacking toy and the toys have little holes in some of them so you can make like water streamers and stuff like that. So here we can take the shapes and match them in the bucket. The yellow one's going in and the blue and the red and the green. Yay, we did it! And what's really fun is these have holes in them too. So you can put water in them in the pool or in the backyard or in the tub, pour water in and then it'll stream out through these holes. That is pretty awesome. I wonder if I can stack these little ones. Ooh, oh, I didn't do so well. I gotta stack them better than that. You gotta be really smart with your stacks. So, oh, let me try this. That circle one is the one that gets me. We did it! Yay! Oh, they fell down. See, now this bucket that holds everything is also a bucket we can stack on. Here's number 10. I'm gonna put 10 on there. All right, and now we're gonna do number nine. Number nine is gonna go on number 10. I'm holding the camera up high so you can see. And number eight will go on number nine. We're counting backwards. And seven. And six. And five. 
and four, and three, and there's our little pony barn over there, and two, ah, and one. This is so huge, look at that, oh my gosh, it's huge. You can see Lily Cat's name in the window sparkling away. Look at how big this is. Literally, this is bigger than me. It is now over my head. That is the giant, giant set from Miniland Educational of Stackers. They have some really, really cool stuff. Now let's take this down. Whoa. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we stuck them in the bucket. Look at how cool that looks. And all these shape sorters fit right inside. How nice is that? A bucket of fun on the go. Miniland Educational. Check it out, parents, and check it out, boys and girls. Oops, you got to try this right. And I know you saw these ponies when I was showing you the giant stackers. And let's check them out. Because sometimes we forget that even though we know what a kitty is and a puppy and a horsey, we forget there's many different kinds. And this stable is from Melissa and Doug. They have some of the best stuff. I'm gonna write to them and see if they wanna let Lily Cat showcase some toys on her, on her um, YouTube channel here because I think that they are an excellent company to work with. So let's open it up and let's see who's inside. There's a lot of ponies in there. Here is a quarter house horse. Quarter house, that's funny. I meant a quarter horse. Look at how pretty she is. Is she not amazing? Oh, I just love her. And she's really tall. She's about 14 feet tall. That's from her top of her head to the bottom of her feet. <laughs> She's pretty tall, a full grown one. And let's see, this one is an Andalusian. She's, she's really funny. She's a Spanish horse, but she's got polka dots. And I love that, that's so cool. It looks like a little snowflake horse. I love that. My favorite design is a snowflake. So I love anything like that. And this is called a paint horse. There's another name for it, but I don't remember what it is. I don't actually own any horses. My cousins do though. But this is a paint horse. And isn't this just so pretty? I love it. And this is a Tennessee walking horse. Look at that. Is that not a cool pony? I guess I should call it a horse. A pony is whoa! Pony is technically a little horse. I shouldn't have stuck it on there. That's okay, sometimes things fall. Even big people can make messes. But messes are okay, as long as we clean them up and we don't damage anything. There we go. We've got the Tennessee walking horse up there. So we have the quarter horse, the Andalusian, the paint, and the Tennessee walking horse. Well, let's see who's over here. Here's a Appaloosa. She's got polka dots, like a blanket on her back and her back end. Isn't that fun? She's really pretty. And the Morgan horse. Look at that. Doesn't she look sleek and amazing? That's a Morgan horse. I don't know how they got their names, but they're pretty cool. An Arabian horse. This is probably my most favorite, just because it reminds me of, of the princess riding off into the sunset with her, with her knight in shining armor. That is such a pretty horse, look at that. That is an Arabian. And we have one more, we have a thoroughbred. And these are probably the most desired because thoroughbreds are the ones that run in races. This is a thoroughbred. Usually a thoroughbred is a genuine, a horse who's genuinely of one kind. It's not mixed with like, um, it's not like you have a, a Morgan mommy and a, a Tennessee walking horse daddy. This is just specifically one horse that's thoroughbred 
and it's made for like good genetic lines and racing or whatever. So these are the ponies from Melissa and Doug. They have a lot of fun toys that you can get and play with that are also learning toys. So if you want, check out Melissa and Doug. They are phenomenal. Let's put these ponies back in there. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to do a, a video with Lily Cat. Maybe a stable, get a stable and do a pony and stable video. That would be fun. We don't have any farm toys yet. We're working on that. But a lot of good stuff happens on a farm. You learn about nature, you take care of animals. Sometimes on farms they have animals that like they'll milk cows and take some of the cream and turn it into cheese. They'll have chickens that lay eggs. If you have a farm then you can have space for a cow or a chicken or a couple pigs and a little garden, you can pretty much grow all your food out of plants and animals without really ever having to buy much from a store. It takes a little effort, but it's a lot of fun to grow stuff. That's another good idea, boys and girls. Maybe we should do a growing video with a lily cat. Grow some plants? We'll check that out. Now, remember when I was saying a stable um, video would be fun? This isn't a real stable, but this is a really fun stable. This is um, one of those do-it-yourself kits where you can, you can buy it unfinished. It comes with ponies. You can take them out and play with them, but you can paint your own stable. This is another fun way to learn. It's called a craft. You can do your own activity. And in this one, I think we might paint the, the, the um, stable red or brown, because most barns are red and brown, and a stable is kind of like a barn for horses. And then we put the ponies in there, and then what we can do is we can get some little bales of hay, and put them there for them to eat, maybe some carrots, because horses like carrots and they like veggies and some fruits. And then we can get a little fence around, because in most stables, they get to come out and they get to walk around a little bit and eat some grass. So there's a lot of fun toys out there that you're learning with them and you don't even really know it. Another example is this one. Have you guys seen this before? This is really fun. It comes with some little cars, and some kids, when they start playing with it, the little, little kids, they just like to put something in there and see it go down. But what it does teach is it teaches cause and effect. Do you know what cause and effect is? Cause and effect is when you say, if I do this, then that will happen. So if I do something, I know something else is going to happen. For instance, if I put this up here, I know it's going to come sliding out of there and I can catch it. This is really fun. Should we try putting all four of the cars? There's red, blue, green, and yellow. Okay, here we go. Red, blue, green, yellow. Ooh, did you see that? Let's turn it towards us and do it. Okay, we're going to do all of them in a row. Are you ready? Red, blue, green, yellow. Ah, they're coming at us. Isn't that funny? And they have a lovely clacking noise. It's so much fun to watch and listen to. We'll do it one more time. I'm going to move the camera and see if you can get a nice view of this. All right, you're ready? Here we go. There's yellow. You can see it going down there. Oh, there it goes. And then we'll do green. Oh, there it goes. And a red. And a blue. Oh, they're kicking each other out at the end. Isn't that fun? This is a great toy. And then when we're done, we just stack them on their side in here and push them up the ramp. Oh, there we go. And it's like kind of like a little holder for them. So this is a cool toy. So you're learning about cause and effect while you're playing. And then this, this is just a funny throw-in I wanted to show you. We were talking about animals, and a squirrel is an animal, but we were going through the grocery store one day, and I checked out, and when I checked out and came home, I found the squirrel in there. It says, wildlife dog toy with squeaker. Well, that's fine, but we don't have a dog, so I have no idea how the squirrel got in our grocery cart. So let's open it up. 
Let's look at this. I think this is pretty much the size of a real squirrel. Full grown, of course. Look at that. Maybe it's a real squirrel's a little smaller. But isn't that funny, that bushy tail? And their furry little bellies and feet and hair. That was so funny to find this in there. We loved it. We haven't figured out what to do with it yet, but we're going to do something fun with it in a video. Something that will make people giggle. Maybe we'll try to do a trick with Lily Cat's daddy and he'll find a squirrel somewhere and he'll be surprised. If you have an idea what we can do with it, put it in the comments. And if we choose you, maybe we'll send you a surprise. There you go. All right. Now, I've got something else that is commonly fun for kids, but it's also a learning activity. This is bag of blocks. This is 50 wood building blocks. We got this from a place called Ryan's Room from Small World Toys. Check them out. They've got some really cool stuff. And we'll take these out. And as you can tell, Lily Cat and I have had fun with some of these blocks. We tried painting some silver. It was really cool. Dump them all out. Ooh, look at that. There's a lot of blocks. Well, see, here's some of them we tried to paint silver. We just thought it'd be fun. They're so sparkly. Can you see that? Ooh. But we just tried it because we want to see how many glitter paints there are and what colors there are. We wanted to see if it would stick and it does. So we're going to go through and paint some of these. But Building things is a very good way to learn. There's a lot of things you can learn from building, such as balance, structures, you can learn how to make bridges, you can learn why some things work better than others because of their shape or their size. So we are gonna go through and build something. So I guess now we have to figure out what should we build? There's so many choices, things we can build, but we have to remember we only have so many blocks. I should get some more blocks and we can build a really big thing. That would be really fun. What should we build today, boys and girls? And if you have an idea of something you want me to build at another time, put that in the comments and then I will get some blocks and I will get back here and I will build it with a lily cat. Or if she's busy doing another video, I'll come and do a video. We all started doing videos because we like them so much. They're a lot of fun because then we get to talk to you guys. <laughs> okay, so these are the blocks we have. And we have to figure out what we're going to block, what we're going to build with these blocks. And this is what we have. Anybody have any ideas? Should we try to build a house? Or should we build a road and a bridge? Or should we build a tower? A tower? Okay, we'll build a tower, good idea. Hmm, what kind of tower? Let me see. Um, we could just build a tall tower, but we just did a tall tower with the giant blocks. I know. Let's build a tower on a house. Oh, how is that? They can have a lookout tower on top of their house. Okay, our house won't have a roof because we want to see into it. So let's try starting with, <laughs> let's start with this. We want to have a house and we want to be able to in and out of it like that and we need to build it up too so we have to try to put some extra ideas into these blocks can we do that I think we can we can make a little house right here we can go into we'll spread it open in the front and we'll do this. Um, yeah, let's do this. These are short. I wonder if we can get a long one over there. Can we get a long one on there? Oh, it fell down. Okay, let's try again. Sometimes it falls. Let's try doing a different method here. Let's try this. 
Yep, I know it looks kind of different, but it's going to work, I promise. Sometimes when it doesn't work the first time, you have to try, try again, right? Yes, indeed. There. Does that look a little better? I agree. I think it looks awesome. We'll put this one under there in the back just for a little support. And then we're going to build our tower back there. Look at this. We'll start our tower like that. And then we'll build it like this and we'll move it a little bit closer. Ooh, and our tower on there. Look at that. Is that not an awesome tower? It's getting pretty tall. I'm going to put another one on. And we're going to put another one on. There's our big tower. Ah, it fell down. Oh no. That was pretty fun though. Let's try a little something different. Okay. We're going to make a little entrance right here in the front door of the house so that people can go in the front door and then we'll put a little roof on it just like that. Oh, you know what we could do? We could do a second story floor. <gasps> How about that? <laughs> I think we'll use this one. They're the same height. Look at that. Whoa, is that not cool? I'm gonna make this a little bit closer because it has to overlap just enough, whoa, to catch up. Look at that. We made a two-story house. Oh my gosh, we are awesome. Should we make the door a little higher maybe? Yeah, I think you're right. Let's do this. Let's put these on their side. They're not quite as tall as the second story, but it makes it look like more of a door. Is that better? Yes. That's so amazing. And then in the back, we'll put one of these. Actually, we'll why don't we do this instead? We'll put this on there. So maybe when we look out the back door, nope, that won't work. Okay, well let's try this block. And then we'll do this on there. There we go, that's what we want. Good idea. And then when we, we'll have an arch here, and when we look on the second floor, we'll have an arch out there. Nice, but we still need to add one more story on. Do you think we can do it? Let's give it a try. Hmm, how do we do this? Let's try these little blocks. That works good. Now we don't have any more arches, but we certainly... Whoa, did I just bump that off? Whoa, good thing we caught it. Blocks are so tricky. You have to be really careful with them. You know what, I think we can go a little taller. Should we try taller? Ooh, we're getting pretty daring. Here we go. Can you see that all right? There we go. Look at that. We are making a super, super tall house. <gasps> oh, how's it looking? Does it look pretty good? Okay, let's put this on now. We have a tiny little roof there. Hmm. I think we need to put yet another roof on there. All right, let's put another one back here. We'll put two wood square blocks. Whoa, and then we have one more in here. This is so tiny, we can't even hardly get in, but we can see through it. Wow, that was awesome, I love it. We are building the coolest stuff ever. Okay, now, do we dare go up higher, boys and girls? We have one story, two stories, three stories, all right. This is the grand finale. Oh, okay, how do we do it? How do we do it? We have those to go across. All right, let's give it a whirl. Let's see what we've got. One, two, three, four. Oh. Whoa, look at that. We're making our little roof on there. I said we weren't gonna make a roof, but we actually are. You guys are incredible helping me make this four-story house. One, two, three, four. That is amazing. Can we make it a little bigger? 
Oh my gosh, we totally did. Ah! And we can put one of these right here. Or, well, I think that works really good. We could even, ooh, that's teetering on the very edge. Stay up there, don't fall, don't fall. Ah! I don't want it to fall. It's so cool. We're gonna put this big silver one right here. And this one right here. <laughs> and then, I'm gonna put this on. Ah, yikes. Right here. And then we'll put our roof on. Look at this. We got two right there and right here. Look at what we built, boys and girls. That was so amazing and fun. All right, let's look at this. We have our main floor and we can see a little peak out there. We've got our arch here. And then we can see out the second one and see we've got our arch right here. There's another doorway. Our third floor, that's just like a hallway. And then a tiny little peak hole. And then we have our roof. We did amazing! Woohoo! Good job with the structure. People who build buildings are called architects. Architects have to learn how to do a lot before they can get a job building structures. Because if you don't build it just right, it can fall down. So you have to learn a lot of math and you have to learn a lot of woodworking and a lot of materials, like different kinds of materials, like what's better for a floor, cement or metal or wood. There's a lot of things to learn. So building is a learning experience too. So if you like to build, check out Bag of Blocks at Ryan's Room from Small World Toys. Awesome company with awesome toys. Have a Mary Cat day! Like and subscribe.